Hey everybody, this is Troy Alexander, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. We are excited tonight. We have a phenomenal and an amazing guest, and I'm so honored to have her on our broadcast. But before then, again, Inspiration with Troy Alexander, we come on to encourage you to follow your dream and not give up on your dream. Our motto is dream, take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Tonight, we encourage you, whatever it is, you got to believe. Use your power to believe, because I'm telling you, that is a power that you have through all the difficult moments, the storm, the test. You have to believe, knowing that there's more for you after where you are right now. So we're excited tonight to have an amazing guest, and I'm going to introduce her short bottle, so much more than she is and does and is about to do. Yes, I said he was about to do, but listen, she is our reigning Miss New Jersey volunteer. She in the Serve Initiative. My goodness, she has this initiative called Serve Service Education, Responsibility, Volunteerism, and Empowerment. Listen, she graduated. She's a graduate from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. First generation. My goodness, she has a cumulative 4.0 GPA. Sumo cum laude. That's what I'm talking about, Hope. Listen, she currently is enrolled in Western Governors University in the Master's of Science degree. Listen, her goal to write the curriculum and, and be an advocate for legislation to impose required family and consumer science curriculum at the secondary level in all 50 states. Listen, her website is www.thelifeskillslady.com. You better follow her. Let's welcome Hope Kier. How are you, Hope? I am amazing. It is an honor to be here. Um, thank you so, so much for having me. And I'm excited to, to jump right in. Well, listen, I, again, I, I, I got to ask you, I read in your bio about this initiative called SERVE, Service, Education, Responsibility, Volunteers, and Empowerment. What inspired you to start this initiative? So it was actually when I started joining the Miss New Jersey Volunteer System. When you join that system, everybody has to create their own SERVE initiative. So like you had just mentioned, and essentially each one of those key points has to tie into something that you're really passionate about and something you wanna advocate. So for me, it was life skills education. So my serve initiative is called Leading a Lifetime of Life Skills, where I get to teach people the tools to be self-sufficient and successful in whatever they may do. So really just those fundamental skills that will propel them into whatever their dreams are. And I know you had mentioned dreams, so it's just something that was just a perfect tie-in for what I was already doing with life skills and being able to have that serve initiative to really like catapult it to the next level was something I was super passionate about. I love it. I love that. I love, where did your heart for service come from? Like, was there a moment growing up where you had an experience or to, what, you have such a beautiful heart for service? How did that happen? It's really interesting. I recently was creating a map of my life. So I was starting like where I grew up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I, I drew a circle and like that was my first stop. And then my second stop was when I went to college at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. And then when I moved to New Jersey and then I moved in New Jersey again, and these were all little circles on my map and it was finding common themes. And it turns out at every single moment in my life, from the time I was in elementary school to high school, to college, to now, I always felt this passion and drawn to service and serving people. So like when I was younger, I was just volunteering with the Girl Scouts and doing like little service projects, helping clean up and things. And as I gradually grew, I went into college and I started doing more elaborate service projects. We were sewing blankets for homeless shelters and all kinds of phenomenal stuff in, in college. And that just, it just kept going. And now it's expanded into an entire program that is totally free of charge. I don't um, ask for any sort of compensation. And it's just because people need these life skills and they need to be free and they need to be able to be accessed by everybody. Wow, that is amazing. I, listen, I love that. And you have to tell me, like, serve, right? You talk about service, education, responsibility, volunteerism. Why, why did you choose those words? So it was not my choice exactly. So it was the oh. Miss New Jersey Volunteer Organization, oh. which oh, is beautiful. the state organization of the Miss Volunteer America organization. And that is their mission statement. And it's something that I truly embody as Miss New Jersey volunteer. And I didn't create those words, but I live each of those words out every single day. I love that hope. I love that. Listen, y'all, she said, listen, I didn't create it, 
but I live them. And that is even, you know, added, added influence, my goodness, upon, you know, that wonderful organization. Thank you so much, Hope. That is wonderful. You are truly inspiring so many. And listen, you are just a trendsetter, right? You, I, I, I think of what you're doing and, and how, because I don't know if I know anyone that has chosen home economics, that has chosen life skills, right? All of these things as, as their platform. I think you might be the first person that I've ever met where that has been their platform. So I got to ask you, going back to college, you, you put in your bio that you are the first generation that was connected to your graduation from Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Why did you feel the need to put first generation in your bio? I am super proud of being a first generation college student. I my parents were factory workers and warehouse workers growing up and I saw just that I felt like I could just do more in life. And, and, you know, obviously we absolutely need people to work jobs like that, but I've always had this passion, this inkling to be a teacher and to inspire others. So it was just, it was something that I, I had to do. I had to go to college and it didn't matter. Like I was going to get there no matter what. Um, I applied for every single scholarship I could get my hands on. I was writing essays. I was drawing pictures. I applied to like silly scholarships, like people that can do a split, apply for the scholarship, <laughs> everything under the sun. And I was very, very fortunate to be awarded um, a very nice amount of money in scholarships to be able to fulfill my education. And the rest of the loan, um, the rest I had to take out in student loan debt in my own name. And I was working three jobs in college to support wow. my education, was wow. a resident assistant orientation leader. I worked at the major and career student um, center. And then my freshman and sophomore years, I also worked at the dining hall. So four jobs total in wow. college just to sustain my education, because as a first generation college student, I didn't come from you know, wealthy parents that were going to give me thousands and thousands of dollars. And they did everything they could to help me. Don't get me wrong. I love my parents, but I just had to do everything I could to really get to that next level. So it's wow. something I'm really proud of is being able to accomplish that as a first gen. Listen, everybody, working three jobs, four jobs. She, she probably not like, she probably had five jobs, not knowing what, that that was a job, right? But through all of that, she ended up with a cumulative 4.0. I'm telling you, Hope, that is wonderful. And I'm like, how did you balance? How did you maintain the focus on the schoolwork with having that many jobs. It's all in time management, which is one of the life skills I get to teach through my program, Leading a Lifetime of Life Skills. I actually have a technique, it's called the Tactile Time Management Plan. And it's tactile because it's really hands-on. So we give everybody a worksheet and you block out and it's color-coded and you plan out your entire week. And then we plan out your entire month and then we keep going. And it's this really hands-on tangible way to really be able to see, okay, so I'm going to wake up at this time and I'm not hitting snooze. I'm getting out of bed. I'm going to manage my time. going to make my make time for breakfast. Often I find people are not eating breakfast and that is so important and so necessary to being able to um, fuel your day and just get through the morning. So it just goes through every little step. And it's something I personally utilize in, in my own life. And you have to, when you're busy, you have to utilize every, every moment. Now, Hope, I got to ask you, because when I went to college, right, they said, you know, there's no one around you telling you to get up. There's no one saying, go to class. No one saying, hey, you're late for class. I'm trying to figure out what, what was your motivation? Because with all these jobs, with school, and I want to talk about self-care too, because, you know, yeah. that's important. How, how, what, what was your motivation for, for having this systematic with, with being young, being a teenager, you got all your friends, they're going to parties, they're doing different things. How, how are you able to, what was your motivation? My end goal really was to inspire people with life skills. And I knew I needed that degree. I needed that wow. knowledge in family and consumer science education. And I woke up every morning knowing I'm going to have my dream job. I'm going to get to teach people how to cook, how to sew, how to manage their finances, navigate relationships. I get to do that for a living. And to me, that's, that was my dream. So it was just a matter of getting to that end goal and also helping other people get to that end goal. I was a resident assistant, so I was in charge of a section of the dormitory, and I would actually teach these workshops before my program had an official name. 
I would gather my residents together in the common area and I'd be like, all right, how many of you missed a class this week? And they like raise their hand, they missed a the class. And, you know, we would talk about, well, why did that happen? And I would teach them how to create a time management schedule. And you had, uh, you had mentioned self-care. And of course, yeah. we schedule in time for self-care. Um, I like to schedule in a minimum of two 15 minute blocks of a day. That's actually something self-care, not scrolling on TikTok, not social media, you know, something where it's actually, you know, taking a moment to breathe or do yoga or paint your toenails, take a bubble bath, something that's actually self-care. Did you see someone doing all of these? Like, where did this evolve in your thought process? Because I'm like you know, sewing and cooking and cleaning. I, I mean, those are, but no, a lot of people aren't consciously thinking, like youth, aren't thinking about that. What, what did you see somebody doing that? Did, what, what sparked you to do all of, to know the importance of all those things? I've always just had this like definitely internal drive about me. I've always been a go-getter since elementary school. I was always involved in so many extracurriculars, always taking time to do community service. But um, I really got a passion for life skills because I grew I grew up in a household where we didn't really cook. You know, we got freezer chicken nuggets for dinner and cereal for breakfast. And of course, those things were were fine. I was able to eat and that's wonderful. But I was so fortunate to take a family consumer science class in middle school. And my teacher, you know, she was teaching us how to like make stromboli. So we were like making bread and it was like so cool. I was like, oh my gosh, there's so much more to, to food than chicken nuggets. And it was just like this little spark. And I was like, oh, I, I have this, this passion now and I wanna, I wanna run with it. Listen, everybody, when you go on Hope's social media page, there's a picture of her, I think with a cape. I think it's a cape, or something, but it says home economic. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> You are all in. I mean, you are totally all in. And I love that about you. I, I, I love the fact that you're passionate. You're, you're, you're inspirational. Um, I wanted to ask you, going back to college, what was that moment like when you graduated for, for, for just you, for your family, for those around you? What did that feel like? What was that moment like for you? It was absolutely incredible. I actually graduated in 2021. So COVID my senior year was absolutely a a hard, hard thing to navigate as a as a student teacher. Um, I ended up at one point having COVID, but I still had to graduate. So I still had to teach. So I was on Zoom with COVID teaching while the students were in the classroom with masks and it's a cooking class. So my my mentor teacher is like running around with the, the laptop trying to be like, are they cutting this onion right? Is this group measuring right? And it was such a obstacle to navigate, but really it made me a stronger person. And at the end of the day, when I was able to walk across that stage and shake hands with the president and, and graduate um, with a 4.0 cumulative grade point average, I also had two minors um, in addition to my degree in family consumer science. It it really felt like all my dreams are coming true. And the coolest thing, I started my real big girl job the very next day. <laughs> the very wow. next day. <laughs> Amazing hope. That is phenomenal. Thank you. Listen, so I got to ask you, right? Because people, see, first of all, people probably don't believe that you're real, like a, like a real, because you're just so awesome and so amazing and so inspiring. And you knew, it seemed like you knew very young what it was that your pathway would lead you to, or at least what pathway to take. Um, I got to ask you, because again, there, there, there's so much happening. Um how did you even like other times where you're like you wasn't sure at all or but you you always knew I guess at a young age I always knew I wanted to be a teacher at a young age I wasn't sure I wanted to be a family and consumer science teacher at a young age because I I wasn't given those classes until middle school and then when I had those classes in middle school I was I was all in from there but I always had this passion for teaching like even when I was young and I was a cheerleading uh I was just on the cheerleading team but I remember I would stay after practice and I would teach people how to do back handspring and I would help the stunt group that wasn't getting it I always had this like little passion for for teaching and whatever it was. And even in high school, we would do like group projects and presentations. And I always would like want to take charge and delegate tasks and, and help people, you know, it was just something about uh, me is, is called to educate and called to teach. I love that. I love that. And it's, I mean, it's so awe inspiring. Listen, listen, y'all, 
I, I told Hope already, she's amazing, phenomenal, a light in the world, inspiration, astronaut, she's all, all those things, right? Um, but I gotta ask you, do you ever have a down moment? Are there any times where you're like, I don't know how it's gonna work out? Or, I mean, because you're so, so strong, you, you, you appear to be very sure of yourself, but has, have there been times in your journey where you, you, you wasn't quite as sure? Oh, for sure. I'm a human, right? And there's always going to be moments in your journey where you're not sure exactly how something's going to play out, or maybe it doesn't play out how you plan. But it's right. not about that. It's about getting back up from that. So when something like goes off the path, that's okay. That's normal. And it happens. Um, and you just have to take a moment to collect yourself. I love to do like chair yoga. I like to take deep breaths you know, take a moment for yourself, like you were talking about self-care, and then start with plan B. And then if plan B doesn't work, do plan C and just keep going. Um, it, there's just, there's never enough plans. You, of course, you're going to make mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes, but it's not about the mistakes. It's about recovering from them. Keep trying, never give up. Wow. What is your book coming out, Hope? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someday. <laughs> Listen, I have thought about it. I have. <laughs> yes, yes. You need a, a book or a, something to just continue to uplift and inspire the world because I love it. I love it. And, I, and I'm, we talked about the importance of self-care. We are in the world of social media, right? And not everybody is positive, right? Not everybody wants to uplift you and they want to kind of... Yeah. Have you had those moments where people have said negative things or have you gone through that part of your life thus far? 100%. There's always going to be Debbie Downers out there. There's always going to be people that are negative and they're coming from, I don't know why they're coming from that place, but I actually teach in my program, Leading a Lifetime of Life Skills, a class on netiquette. And I get to teach people, If for, for people listening to the show, if you're not sure what netiquette means, it's a relatively new word. I don't think it's officially been added to the Merriam-Webster yet, but hopefully it will be. Um, and it, it is um, internet etiquette, but they call it netiquette. And, and in this class, I teach this one segment called when in doubt, hit the unfollow button. You don't need that negativity. You don't need to be following somebody that is having negative energy in your life. If you're on social media, that's great. I'm on social media, but I like to follow accounts that are inspiring and, and uplifting like you. So <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. Listen, I am like... I want you as my teacher. I want to go back to school because I want to have a teacher like you. I'm, your students are so fortunate and blessed to have you, you because you're so passionate. This is your life. It seems to be like a, your calling in life to, to just teach that. And it's wonderful. I, I am like, you are a teacher called to be a teacher. You're just amazing. And, and I love that about you. I, I just, and, and it's, it's interesting because Everything I say, I feel like you have a class for. So like <laughs> it's all life skills. It's so, so important. Those foundational skills and they're not taught enough. You know, people don't know how to navigate things like people being mean on social media. So right. of course I have a class for it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Listen, listen. And it's called what again? Uh, Netiquette? Netiquette. Yep. It's one Netiquette. of my 15 workshops in my program, Leading a Lifetime of Life Skills. And I'm looking to expand um, up to 20 workshops by the end of this year. Listen, you need to hire hope. You need to bring hope into your schools, bring hope into your, your youth programs, into your boys and girls clubs. Hire hope, contract with hope. I know you said free, but no, she got to be paid to, <laughs> to fly out across the country. So pay her to come and teach. I'm like, you are a born teacher. Cause like, I feel like I'm in class. <laughs> I feel like we're, because you're so good and so engaged. That, listen, that's wonderful. So I gotta ask you, it seems like you love education so, so much. Are you aspiring to even go beyond a PhD after you get past your next degree? Yes, yeah, so I'm five credits away from getting my master's degree and that'll be in curriculum and instruction. Um, and I, I picked that because I am, with I'm um, creating this program. So I want to learn like the ins and outs of how to write a good curriculum, how to, you know, make sure your curriculum aligns with the learners that you're teaching it to. So that was my first step. And then I do want to get my doctorate in educational leadership. Um, and just by having that PhD will really propel me to, to my 
end goal, which is writing a national curriculum for family and consumer science in, in all 50 states. Listen, everybody, if you know hope, if, if, if you see hope later on today or tomorrow, get her autograph, get a selfie, make sure that people have proof that you know her because Nobel Peace Prize winner, Hope Kill, listen, I'm telling you, Teach of the Year, Hope Kill. I listen, I, listen, I am so, I'm going to see you one day, whether in the White House, on CNN, on Fox, on somebody's television station, talking about home <laughs> economics and life skills. Um, so I just, I'm, I'm just, I'm amazed by you. I mean, I was- That would be a dream. That would be awesome. <laughs> from, your bio, from your bio and all, but, but just talking to you, you're even more amazing and more phenomenal. Oh, wow. Thank you. <laughs> you amazing. And so I got to ask you, because we're, we're in this world of AI now, right? Mm -hmm. Robots are doing this. Mechanical things are doing that. Um, has that impacted your, your approach or your concept about uh, life skills and, and teaching? Whereas a lot of things now, we don't have to actually do, all, do a lot as much Back in the day, right? We have a machine. You hit a button, and the machine yeah. does a lot of things. I mean, I heard somebody tell me um, there's a there's a machine there's a, a device that cuts grass. So you hit the button, and it goes out, and it goes all around your lawn. I'm like, so so I wonder, like, has that impacted you in any way? I think that's a really important question to touch on: is artificial intelligence. Um, and with things that are hands on, like life skills. Now, you just mentioned the grass cutting. I never heard of that. But as of right now, I, and I don't think there's a robot that's going to come into your house and be able to cook a meal for you. Um, I don't think there's a, a robot that's going to come into your house and be able to actually um, go over your finances and go over them from a place that's authentic and true to you. So I'm not too worried about my program being taken over by AI. Um, life skills are just so hands on and they're really those fundamental tools that you need. And then the other thing I want to mention about AI was actually in a professional development um, setting and the presenter um, asked this question and, and she asked, is using a GPS navigation system, is that cheating? And I thought that was such an interesting question. I wonder why, why she said that, um, you know, and, and then she continued and she was like, well, at first, you know, the GPS helps you get from point A to point B blind. But if you keep using that GPS, eventually you are going to learn. And she was kind of saying how with AI, it's possible it could actually help some students because you know, that kid who's afraid to raise their hand in class, like in my culinary fundamentals class today, they I asked the question, what is a poem? And a poem is a, a fruit that has a core in the middle. So it's things like an apple or a pear. And you know, that shy student who might not know the answer, they could type it in real quick to some sort of AI software and it could give them the answer and they might then have the confidence to raise their hand. Wow. And now they're actually teaching. So I think AI can be beneficial when used in, in the right sense too. Um, sure, there's some things that AI is never going to replace, like this human connection we're having right now. AI yeah. is never going to replace that. But it can definitely be used in, in the right settings. Listen, if there's an answer, Hope's going to find it. I'm telling everybody, amazing. I love that. And I love how whatever the technology, whatever the shift, whatever the paradigm shift that may happen, you find a way, I know you will, you'll find a way to bring that into a curriculum to still be able to teach life skills, right? And I love that. And it's wonderful because to me, that shows me that your, your thought process is, is, is open and amenable to change, right? Absolutely. And so many Absolutely. Young people, they have a hard time dealing with change and adjustment, right? Like, no, I practice this way. And if it doesn't look that way, then I'm kind of lost. Right. But I love the fact that you're teaching them, listen, whatever space you find yourself in, these are the skills that you can learn, adjust them as you need accordingly. But guess what? They're going to be the foundation for you getting through. So I love that. Thank you, Hope. Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, so listen, everybody, not only is Hope a phenomenal teacher, she's again, uh, 4.0 summa cum laude. She's going on. She's five credits from a master's about to go on and become a PhD, about to become like director of education of the Department of, of listen, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised right now, you know, Hope, if, if you're like the head of education for the entire country. But anyway, um, I want to ask you, 
pageantry. I mean, you, 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 I'm like, how do you find time to even, you know, get involved with pageantry? You are our Miss New Jersey volunteer. I said our, right? Our Miss New Jersey volunteer. When did pageantry become part of your journey? It is a really interesting story. So I didn't start out like in toddlers and tiaras. I, I was actually 21 the first time I decided to do a pageant. And really, I decided to do a pageant because I found out this really alarming statistic that only one third of American high schools have any sort of formal home economics education classes. So that means two thirds of our youth are leaving high school, not knowing even how to make a microwavable meal, not knowing how to file their taxes, not knowing how to have a conversation with somebody, these critical skills. And I am I was super fortunate at that point to be already teaching. And I'm so, so thankful to be in a school district that values home economics education. But I was like, I need to get my message out there. I need to reach the two thirds of American high school students that are not getting this education. So I was doing my research and I was like, how can I reach a lot of people? And the same theme kept popping up for my research, get into pageantry. And I was, it was always something that I, I saw my friends doing growing up. I was like, oh, it's cool. Um, but it was just that, that one statistic that was like, bam, I, I have to do this. Listen, I am, first of all, I am inspired by the reason why you got into pageantry. That is the first time I've ever heard somebody say, I want to really elevate this platform. Like, like that's why, not, not for any other reasoning for, for self, you know, but, but just to help someone else to be able to grow. Listen, that is, that is, hope. that is amazing. Like, I don't know if I've ever heard someone say that's the reason why I got, but, and then you only look 21. So don't give me your age, but I'm like, you're, I'll I'm, take it. I like it. <laughs> I'm like, wow. So, so again, I, I gotta, it's, it's amazing your pathway that, that this is taking. And what I love about you is that you're so intentional about the, the decisions that you make and the choices that you make. And I'm like, that is powerful because not so many people are intentional about I'm doing this because. Have you always been that way? I, I would say so. I've always been a goal setter. I've always been intentional about starting what I finish. Even if it was like something I wasn't super into, I knew there was something I could learn from it. Like I can think of a time where all my friends wanted to sign up to play lacrosse. And I was like, okay, lacrosse can be fun. And honestly, I did not love lacrosse, but it didn't matter. I signed up for that season. I was going to learn the most I could learn. I was going to cultivate those friendships and I was going to take something away from it. And I was going to finish it out. I've always been very intentional about finishing out, out wow. everything I've started. Super intentional. Um, and I, it's it's really, again, I feel like it's just in me. It's just natural. I, listen, I, I believe everybody that if Hope wanted to climb Mount Everest, she could. I would, I would, I would guarantee that Hope will get to that top and be like, Home economics, everybody. <laughs> And, and you would do it with that purpose for, for, for encouraging the schools and those two thirds. You need like, listen, one of the most valuable classes, Hope, that I took in high school, and it was a, an elective, and I'm so glad, was typing. Oh my goodness. I would have never have known how much typing was so valuable to me getting certain jobs, right? And I'm like, yes, not everybody has a secretary, right? Not everybody has someone that can do that. But I was, and even in college, I mean, I was to, 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 to not know how to type. Oh my goodness. So that was, so yes, I, those life skills are so critical. And that was, I was so glad I took that class. Oh my goodness. 100%. So, yeah. They really can yeah. just propel you into whatever career you want to do. You know, you can't be the next lawyer, doctor, engineer, mom. You can't do any of these things without having a core understanding of those basic skills that are going to set you up for success, whether it be healthy eating and nutrition or with your finances, being able to buy a house, all of these things are life skills. Yes. Yes. And, and, and I'm sure it's, it's somewhere in your curriculum, version one, version two, version five, whatever it might be. But I, I, I think what you're doing, you know, in, in your platform, it's helping to, to keep our minds healthy, 
right? Because listen, GPS is wonderful, but now without it, sometimes you don't know where how to get to point anymore because because you're so used to listening to the words, turn left, go right. So so I always think that what you're doing is so valuable because it keeps our mind right. And and in the world of Alzheimer's and the world of you know the, you know the the brain kind of diminishing itself in terms of its use, um, what you're doing is actually helping us grow and sustain who we are. I don't know if you ever, have you ever, have you ever seen it that way? I think that's a great way to put it. And I've never heard anybody word it that way, but I'm going to utilize that. I love that. Um, and I think you're absolutely right. A hundred percent. That's a, uh, uh, I like have chills now. That's a great way to put it. <laughs> yeah, because again, it just, you know, when, when people don't use their, their brain power and their muscles, they become weak. Right. So it's important, like you said, doing tax, you got to think, right? How, how to process that. Cooking food, you have to think how to do it. You know, thing. But if you're just getting a, a package of stuff and pouring it in and turning on the thing, like that's not a process of the, the, the how part. And I love that about you because you're you're about the how to do something so you can be sustainable in who you are. I love that. I'm, I'm 100%. In <laughs> Listen, oh, good. I, I went on your website. And I saw your mission to provide others with the knowledge, tools, resources they need to lead a fulfilling and successful life. I got to ask you, do you feel that your life is fulfilling and successful? Oh, 100%. My life is so fulfilling. Every day I look forward to going to my job, which I know most Americans cannot say. I read some study that the majority of Americans like dread going to work and, and they hate their job. And I am so blessed and so fortunate to be doing what I love and getting paid to do what I love. Um, I love uh, working with young people. And it's so cool for me to see that light bulb moment. I would say that's what is most fulfilling is when we're we're learning something new. Um, like today we were making fried rice. We're in the Asian cuisine unit in my international foods and we have walks at my school so they get to use the authentic cookware. And, and most of my students have, have never cooked with a walk before. And they were like, this is a walk. This is how you do it. I, I saw it on TV. And it's just like that light bulb moment on, on how you can do that. And it's even simple stuff too. Like they've never had to boil water before. They're like, how do I boil water? And you know, you have to start from the ground up. These skills are not being taught in the home. Wow. They need a teacher. And I'm very, very fortunate. And I I love seeing when something just clicks for, for somebody. That's the most powerful part and the most fulfilling part. Listen, I, I when is the school of hope coming? <laughs> I don't know, maybe in the future, we'll see. <laughs> If you need investors, I will I will do all I can to support you, Hope. I, I will do whatever because we need you. And I, you know, I we're here having fun and but I, and, and but it's but we need you. We need more Aww. people like you. We <laughs> Thank will you. Because, because I'm so grateful I learned how to iron, you know, when I was younger, I learned how to yeah. wash clothes. I learned how to, you know, the basic things of life, like you don't know how to, you know, again, and listen, I'm not the best cook in the world, but I can survive. <laughs> yes. And that's what's, that's what's important. Yeah. Um, I, I was an, an RA in college, I had mentioned, and a, uh, a, one of my residents, all of a sudden the fire alarms blaring and, and the noises are going off and it's because they didn't put water in their microwavable mac and cheese cup and things like this, you would, you would wow. think are common sense, but they're really not. And and how many residents would come and knock on my door and they would be like, how do we do our laundry? Like they, they never had been taught that before. And it's really, it's just so alarming to, yeah. you know, people take for granted that people know how to do these things and, and they do not, they need a teacher and they need life skills. And, and that's what I'm here to do. And I'm here to share my passion with the world. Well, listen, the moment they, they wash the colors and the whites, in one load, they'll learn. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> they be like, all my clothes are colored. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. All the whites are dingy and <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but it. even just it. like learning how to turn on the washing machine. That's they true. had no idea how to, how to yeah. even do that or how much soap to add. Um, right. So right. it's it's really... I don't take anything for granted. And I have a lot of patience because um, I have to really start from 
the bare minimum. They come into my classroom knowing very few life skills. And, and by the time they're done, I am fully confident that they are going to um, excel and, and succeed in this world. And same thing with the, the people that come in and out of my program. When I work with Girl Scout troops and youth athletic programs, I'm fully confident by the end of the workshop that they'll be able to navigate all of life's challenges, what we just had worked on in the previous hour, two hours, week, however long the, the session was. <laughs> how, how, how long did it take you to create, to create this amazing curriculum? I mean, so I started, hard. yeah, no, I mean, I started one workshop at a time. I think my first workshop was a, a cooking basics workshop. And I kind of, that was my pilot workshop. And I got in contact with the local Girl Scout troops and the youth um, cheerleading squads and community centers. And, and it was just like my first my first go around, I did all the research, I wrote all the curriculum, I got all the materials together. And it was just, it was just awesome. And then I kept getting new workshops based on talking to what? people in these nonprofit organizations. And they were like, hey, my group of people really need help with time management. Do you think you could create something? And I was like, absolutely. So, you know, I hit the ground running, I did all the research, wow. I, I was able to plan, implement, and then the, the coolest part is all of my workshops are adaptable depending on who I'm working with. So I teach netiquette to Girl Scouts and I also teach it to senior citizens and how I present it is is totally different. So um, I'm really able to be really versatile and and do everything with, with attention to who I'm serving. And it really does come back to that serve. I, I absolutely love serving people. When do you sleep? <laughs> <laughs> when I when I file it into my time management plan, no, I, there you I go. Really... I go. <laughs> my time management plan, Troy, and I say go to bed, hope at eight o'clock, and then get out. Like, okay. Wow! I actually, I do really value sleep, and I notice that on days where I don't have enough sleep, you know, I, I do lack a little bit of energy, or something is is not a hundred percent. So I make sure to really get those those eight hours um, every night. It's really really important to me. Well, offline, I have another possible opportunity for you. Um, cool. May be very beneficial to you. So, we'll t yeah, we'll talk offline. But I'm excited. Awesome. <laughs> um, so Sounds great. I, you know, I, I see your social media. You're in the pageantry. Uh, you're, you're, you're an amazing teacher. You're changing the world because you're changing lives. Right now, I don't know if that's a T-shirt or not, but we're changing the world because we're changing lives. But... Um, all of that, and and I'm like, you're a top model. Have you have you gone into modeling? I have been able to do some modeling, uh, which is really cool. And honestly, pageantry is what was able to get me into these sort of modeling. Um, different modeling gigs that I've been able to do. I had a really good friend who was in pageants and she has her own bridal line. It's called Alfred's Bridal. So I was able to model for her. Um, actually, I was able to model her like bridal swimwear line in swim week, which was really, really cool. Um, and then I was able to model for uh, Boogie Masuni Rivera, who is a gown designer. Um, and he makes some really cool gowns that um, people in the Miss Universe system have even worn. Um, and I was able to model for him also down in, in uh, Florida. So it's been, it's really cool. <laughs> wow. Wow. Listen, I'm going to be driving into New York, Times Square. I'm going to look up on the billboard. I'm going to say, Hope. I'm going to have Hope's picture, Hope's name, and it's going to be a caption, Home Economics looks amazing on you. Okay. But anyway. oh, I love that. Thank you. Uh, no, I, I just, yeah, because that definitely is another platform that you can continue to use. And I mean, so do you go around the world now and teach or is it just in, in Jersey or just there or just there? Where? I do most of my work in New Jersey because I absolutely love the Garden State. Um, I'm not originally from here, but I fell in love with it from pretty much the first day I moved here. I go all up and down North Jersey, South Jersey. I'm from Central Jersey, um, but I have expanded past New Jersey. I've been in other states like New Hampshire and Pennsylvania, and I've actually been able to, based on some of my research that I've done, reach people in all 50 states on my website, which is something that is really incredible. And I want to continue inspiring people from all over the United States and maybe someday even beyond that. Um, it is really, it's just my passion. <laughs> so, so Hope, I got to ask you because you talked about doing virtual classes. 
Yeah. You offer that? Like- Absolutely. All of my classes are offered both in person and virtually. So depending on the situation, um, I'm able to meet the needs of the organizations that I'm partnering with. During COVID, I had to utilize the virtual methods. I wasn't allowed to go in schools. I wasn't allowed to, you know, meet with the Girl Scouts. They were meeting on Zoom. Um, So all of my workshops can be done virtually. And that doesn't mean that they're not engaging and they're not hands-on. Um, so we're still like, if it's a virtual cooking workshop, you best bet you're in your kitchen and I'm asking you to find the different kitchen utensils and it's really engaging. And all of my, my programs are also offered virtually. So it's very accessible to everybody. I love that. Listen, you better hire her now, everybody, because after a while, she's going to be booked out for like a year, right? So you better hire her now. I'm telling you, get, get her on your list for your, your, your church group, your youth group, your school group, your whatever it is, you make sure you get, get um, hope. Cause I'm also gonna talk to her offline about something else as well. So I'm excited for you, Hope, just excited for you. So I gotta yeah. ask you, what, what, what else is on your vision board? Because first of all, you're gonna have this national curriculum. You are gonna be like a Nobel Peace Prize winner. You are gonna be Dr. Hope Keel. You are good, right? So I have no doubt about that. But what else that you may not have shared with us far is, is on your vision board? Because I know there has to be something else. So currently I'm a life skills blogger. So all of my life skills topics are available on my website. Um, and it teaches you if you're more of a like a you learn better by reading. All of that information is available and I post weekly different blog posts, um, the whole range of life skills from packing for vacation to navigating conversations around the holiday time when people are stressed out, just any sort of life skill imaginable. And all of that content is free um, to access on my website. And then I've been thinking, which is really interesting because you brought it up, I do want to eventually write a life skills book that would be really popular for people right about to go into college, right about when they're about to leave the nest. Like, how do we do microwave cooking? How do we do our laundry? Just some basic life skills to navigate college. How do I make sure I have enough money to get home for spring break? How do I use public transportation? Um, so I do have that in the works. I, I might have written like chapter one. So that <laughs> that might be in the works. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I if you don't have contracts with the Boys and Girls Club of America, if you don't have a contract with the Girl Scouts, if you don't have, you need to have because it's desperately needed. It is desperately needed. And I'm like, I, I can see you having like, contract of my contracts right so you know if you need help with them just let me know but contracts of my contract amazing because these young people need you they they again and and, it, it, and as you said it's not because the parents don't want to teach or don't want to help sometimes they're so busy working right by the time they come home they're tired the kids have homework or doing this so there's not really a lot of time to kind of like teach right? The, the basic things. And so, so this isn't anything about parents because listen, they're, they're working, you know, all hours and two or three jobs and you come home. Like, so we need you and you need those contracts too. You do. You awesome. Do. No, you're a hundred percent right. It really comes down yeah. to most people now they're, you know, they're living in a, in a household where both parents are working. Yes. Um, and that is something that, you know, in the 1960s, that was very unusual to have both parents working. But now that's the normal. You're having both parents working. So like you said, there just isn't that time to be able to teach these life skills. And and unfortunately, you know, it's the program is not in every school, but that's my goal to get it in every school. I want it right up there in the forefront next to math, science, English, history, because what we do is math, science, English, history. My students are learning all of those in my classes. So there's no reason for life skills not to be to be right up there and being a mandatory class. Well, listen, you're gonna do it. Hope if anybody can do it, Hope can do it. So, Hope, I gotta ask you: Do you ever collect testimonials from the students or the adults that you teach? Yes, I, I've been. I don't like collect them, but I've been very fortunate to receive emails and text messages yes, yes. about how this has just changed their life. I can think of one example. I was working with the Best Buddies organization and um, a participant had sent me 
this awesome email about how my program has changed his life. And now he feels really confident being able to navigate a, a conversation with somebody, what to do when he gets overwhelmed in that conversation. Um, and just some of those techniques were just, just never taught. And, and really that's what it comes down to is just education and just stories like that warm my heart. I know I had a student one time who was living at a group home and she took my international foods class and she was so inspired that she went back to her group home and made every Monday around the world Monday. And she was able to teach a recipe from my class to her group home. And it's like those little stories. It's just like this work is just so fulfilling. Hope, I don't know if you've ever been highlighted on Channel 12 News. Have you? <laughs> no. Okay. We have, we're going to get you. We, we need you highlighted on Channel 12 News. All right. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We have to make that happen. Um, and I wanted to ask you, um, you were talking about the cooking and the virtual. There was something I wanted to ask you. Um, okay. To come back to me, but I think that it, it, it's, it's so wonderful. Oh, oh, I just want to ask you the, the reason why I asked you, do you collect them? Cause I was wondering, do you do a survey after your class is over so that they can give you like, what they learned or what they thought could be better or what 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 was the best thing about it. I, mean, I didn't know if you had a survey that you gave. Oh, I, I do for my okay. students in my classroom. Yes. I don't typically send it out after my workshops, but that's okay. a great idea. And yeah. I could definitely send some out from, you know, previous participants in my workshop. I think that would be a great idea. And I have lots of workshops on the books coming up, April, May, June, July. I've been scheduling out even through August. I think I have some scheduled, so. I think that's a great idea. I would love to incorporate that. Yes, because the more data you have, when you apply for grants and get these funding sources, like they don't want to know, like, because you have both. Yes, you want that 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 quantitative piece of it in terms of how many kids you service, how many adults you've had. But that qualitative piece, that is so critical to having like that emotional connection. And when you connect it, as we talked about that like, with the brain and mental health, and wellness and self-care and feeling good about yourself and increasing confidence. I'm telling you, Hope, that is going to be phenomenal because when you have a skill set, like it naturally makes you feel more confident. Like, oh, I could do that. Wow. So, so I can, you know, and so, yeah, sorry. I'm excited for you, but yes. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I am on board all the way. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I got to ask you also too, um, is there anything that you would have changed about your journey thus far? Like if you could go back and had the power, say, you know what? I wish I could have done that a little differently or over again. Is there anything that you would do? Honestly, no. I am a firm believer of everything is meant to be the way it's meant to be. And sure, some of my journey has been, you know, a struggle, like having to apply it for so many scholarships to be able to fuel my education because College is expensive, but I would not change it. It has made me a better person being able to, you know, write all these essays and get all this information. Um, it's just made me stronger. And I, I would not go back. I would not change anything. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect. It's all part of the journey, all part of the progress. Um, and I absolutely love every little moment that it's taken to get me to who I am today. And I can't wait for how many more awesome moments that I'm going to have in the future but no I would never I would never want to change anything and guess what hope we can't wait either we're so excited to see what's next for you I'm like wow I I can't wait I I'm I, I'm going to be like yeah I interviewed her yep yep mom that's her you have talked to my wife yep that's her I see it on television and I'll just all of, but I think it's wonderful I'm, I'm so excited for you um are you okay with me sharing this broadcast with channel 12 news Oh, for sure. 100 <laughs> percent. I'm telling you, Hope, we got to get you highlighted. I think I see them on on the weekends uh, with the highlights. We got to get you highlighted. Yes. We have to make that it would happen. Be, that would be amazing. <laughs> got to make it happen. Um, so I got to ask you just a few more questions because I know we, we've been on a minute. Um, if you met someone that just didn't quite believe that their dream could come to pass, what would you say to them to encourage them to not give up on their dream? I would tell them about my dreams and, you know, all of the grit and all of the things that I went through to be able to, to get there. And I'm actively living out my dream. And I don't think any dream is too big or too small. 
absolutely you can achieve your dreams. And I wouldn't just tell them about me. I'd be like, and this is my friend over here and he's achieved this and she's achieved that. And all of my students who I've had, you know, in the past and now they're engineers and doctors and they're creating this world saving drug to cure cancer or something. Who knows? Like, who knows? And, you know, it's just, I believe that you can definitely to whatever you put your mind to. As long as you're willing to put in the time, put in the energy and put in the effort, you can definitely achieve your dreams 100%. Wow, I I am, um, I'm in awe of you. I, I am just, wow, amazing. Such an amazing person, an amazing purpose, goal, vision. Oh my goodness, Hope. Um, so before I ask you the last two questions, is there anything else that you wanna share with us about you, about your journey? Um, yes. <laughs> I'll just, I'll throw out a fun fact. So I see more, maybe less like life skills and obviously love life skills, but a fun fact is I've completed 33 escape rooms. Um, I love to do escape rooms on this side. I think oh. it's a good like metaphor for life. You know, you get in there, you get in there with a group of people and you're solving a goal. You're working towards a challenge. And I love that the clock is running. So there's a little bit of pressure going on and you have to navigate different personality types. And, you know, your, your more analytical friend can do that math over there and you can solve the more creative puzzle. And just having all the, the minds go together is like what I love to do when I'm not busy with, with pageantry and with my job, um, I love to do escape rooms. So that would be my, my fun fact of the hour. <laughs> wow. That is amazing. And I, that is, yeah. I'm like, wow. escape rooms. I love that. That's amazing. And, and, and I love the fact of how you spoke about how like it's time sensitive, right. And you got to process, you got to think in personality, like you're very into that that space and i love that i love that do you play an instrument are, are you a world a world skier something as well <laughs> i grew up playing the viola i played it all throughout high school and middle school and in even elementary school and of course i love to get it out now and then to play it uh but i don't actively play it uh, but I do choreograph my school's musical production, which is really fun. I grew up dancing and I get to share that passion and, and have my vision come to life um, at school. So that's that's another little little fun tidbit. <laughs> I'm like, Hope, is there anything you can't do? I'm like, Hope can do it all, y'all. I'm telling you, Hope is phenomenal. I'm just, you're, you're such, but I love that about you. I love that. It seems to me that you like challenges. Absolutely. <laughs> I am always up for a good challenge. I love to set goals for myself. Um, and again, I teach this as one of my workshops, goal yeah. setting. So <laughs> I love it. I love, I love it. to set goals. Oh my goodness. I am, I am. All right, everybody. I'm telling you, Channel 12, uh, CNN Heroes, uh, whatever we can do, we're going to make sure we get hope out there. Oh my goodness. So hope again, um, our final two questions is again, we want to give you space to acknowledge anyone that you want to acknowledge in your pathway thus far, your journey thus far. Uh, some people are like, no, I don't want to, um, you know, call names, <laughs> but we always give opportunities. So if there's anyone that you want to acknowledge or that's that's been a support to you along your journey, we can give you that time to do so now. For sure. Uh, nobody can do things alone. It's always important to have people in your corners. So definitely thanks to my family, you know, they were the ones who raised me and made me this goal setting, you know, driven, driven person that I am. Obviously, all of my friends are a huge supporter of me. I'm sure they're probably watching right now. So shout out to all of them. Um, and right now, I'm really thankful for the Miss Volunteer America organization and the Miss New Jersey Volunteer Organization for giving me this platform to be able to, to amplify my voice. Even when you have that crown and sash on your head, people are even more drawn to you and they're even more willing to listen and they're people are going to gain life skills at, at a higher rate by having that microphone. So I'm really, really fortunate to be able to be in an organization that values the serve initiative so much. They value giving women a voice to do something they're truly passionate about. Um, so I really want to, want to shout them out as well. Wow. Wonderful. Wonderful. And uh, so my final question to you is how can people find you? Where can they connect with you to, either just follow you or to invite you or to go into talks about doing a class, how can they find you? 
The best way to get in contact with me is through my Instagram. It's at Miss NJ V O L. So NJ and then Vol, like Miss New Jersey Volunteer. Um, so that's definitely the best way to get in contact with me. Or you can go to my website, www.thelifeskillslady.com. And then there's a feature on the website that allows you to leave a message. It'll go straight to my email and I'll be able to email you back and we can get in contact and I can get you on the books. I will tell you it is filling up for, for May is really, really starting to get booked. Um, so if you would love for me to come and partner with your organization to teach a life skills workshop, definitely get your name out there. I would love to partner with you, get you on the books. And like I said, all of my workshops are customized to your organization. I'll ask you about your demographics of people and, and we'll get, we'll get something rolled out. Wow. Everybody, I can't even tell you how, how honored I am to have Hope on our broadcast this evening. And I'm just so grateful for you, Hope. Did you want to have any final words before I have our final words? I would just like to thank you so much for this opportunity. I'm so glad we were able to connect over social media. And I know some of the amazing work that you do with your photography and obviously your radio talk show. So I'm just so honored and so thankful for this opportunity. Well, thank you, Hope. Everybody, again, uh, I'm honored to have you, Hope. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm really for a loss of words, really, how, how emotional, excited I am about you and those you are teaching, these young people that you are impacting the lives and even the seniors that you're working with as well to keep their minds stimulated and keep them growing as well. We need more of hope. We need more of you. And I'm honored to have you, Hope. I'm honored that you took the time out of your busy schedule. I'm glad you put it in your planner. <laughs> this is space for us to have. And I am so grateful for you. You are a jewel. You're priceless. Um, and the world is better and brighter because of you. Thank you so, so much. You are amazing. And I can't see what is next for you. But definitely, I'm going to be reaching out to Channel 12. I'm going to be an advocate to get you out there more and more. So whatever I can do on my end, I am a cheerleader for you. I'm a fan. So whatever I can do to support you and your platform, don't hesitate to call me, message me. In whatever way that you need, I will do my very best to support you because we need you. We need you. That thank you so much. Me. It really does. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Hope. Again, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Again, <clears throat> Inspiration with Troy Alexander. You can stay connected with us on Instagram through our photography page at Troy Alexander Photo. At Troy Alexander Photo. We're also on YouTube, Inspiration with Troy Alexander. And of course, Facebook, Troy Alexander. Thank you so much for joining us on tonight. Again, we encourage you with our purpose, our mission, our declaration, dream. Take that step and walk with purpose into your destiny. Thank you so much. Have a great night and go get that dream. Thank you so much, Hope. Have a great evening. Thank you.